Hello from Atlanta. Uh, today's stop is actually right here. I <laughs> skipped the whole driving part. And uh, believe it or not, today's location is gonna be a tunnel. Well, t today's first location. Frog Street Tunnel. It uh, goes under a, uh, I believe, a, a railway system, and uh, as you can see, it is just ripe <laughs> with uh, street art or graffiti. Not really sure which one uh, is the correct phrase, but uh, people kind of use it interchangeably. I would say the more detailed stuff is definitely street art. Um, <laughs> You know, and then this kind of stuff is more like graffiti. But um, definitely a super cool spot over here in Atlanta. Uh, I'm on a lighted side. Across the way is uh, closed for business, so it's a little bit darker over there. But as you can see, nearly everything here has some kind of spray paint on it or art or uh, graffiti or something like that. So, super chill spot. Really easy parking down here. I, I literally parked uh, like 50 yards away from the entrance. Uh, the roads driving down here, not too great in a school bus, but uh, you know, I made it all right. <laughs> Wasn't so bad. But uh, yeah, let's jump into some, some uh, GoPro shots of this place. there and there is a gigantic wall of uh, murals next to the little uh, sidewalk here and um, a very very knowledgeable resident uh, Lillian uh, pointed out that there's a difference between the tagging side and the mural side and um, the reason that you can come down here and do graffiti or murals is because the property is owned by the um, WCSX, the rail company. So if anybody's a muralist, an artist, I don't know, got some extra nail polish or something, um, do your own, don't just double check, but it, it appears to be uh, completely legal down here. So uh, we have already hit the, hit the road. We're going to location number two, which is also gonna be a very unique, very fun place. Just spotted a dude selling uh, boiled peanuts. All right, so this is the first time I'm gonna have boiled peanuts, and uh, I met my man Bert over here, super nice fellow from Miami, Miami. and uh, we're gonna try some peanuts first, I, I suppose. Which which one do you recommend? I, I like I do like spicy. If you like spicy, these might be the thing. They're a little mild, and uh, in fact, I'm gonna let you sample them like I do everybody uh, else. All right, let's do it. <laughs> this is this is amazing. This is this is something out of my. Normal routine of a Southern California kid. Yeah, look at that. Now, I know it's probably a secret recipe. What kind of stuff he put in there? Oh, garlic, uh, onion, uh, bay leaf. All right, sounds good. All right, here we go. First time boiled peanuts, first time Cajun spice boiled peanuts. Are you supposed to eat the shell? Break them however you want to do. Some people eat the shell and separate them like you do a sunflower mm. seed. Mm -hmm. And some people uh, open them up. But the peanuts been washed, so it don't matter. Alright. I think I'm gonna spit out the shell right now. They're good. And peanuts are uh, technically a, a legume. And they're a little on the spicy side. Right, occasional spicy. Good though. I like it so far. And these are the regular. Alright, here's the regular. 
Mm, oh my gosh. I mean, the, the Cajun is so good, but I can see why peanuts are a legume. They almost taste like a very thick kind of bean a little bit. Right, everybody see that. Like yeah. a bean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go with a small Cajun, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, please. Later, Bert. Thanks, man. <laughs> Nice to meet you too. Oh man, I had the coolest conversation with Bert over there. What a nice, nice gentleman. And uh, I think I uh, might have got him hooked on the bus life. <laughs> Alright, today's next adventure. We are on a trail, a path, called the Doll's Head Trail. And um, basically this property used to be owned by a brick making uh, company, factory. And um, so they dug out, you know, huge parts of the earth. And then that actually formed a little lake or a pond in here. And uh, there's a bunch of outdoor art installations made out of dolls and garbage and discarded things they found on the property. So you're supposed to find some of the art. <laughs> and I'm not really sure where to be looking here because it's a bunch of trees but someone said there's a, a sign for it once you get further along also a big thank you to Anthony Gasson for uh, signing up on patreon I appreciate you man all right here we go follow the red brick dust trail until further instructed and here are the uh, direction markers in case you get lost it's right here this looks like a urban expressionist art right here trail and uh, these are artworks that uh, have been found uh, on the property and uh, just wanted to point out there's a ton of these little fishing bobber things as well as plenty of bricks being a, a brick factory there's probably tons of them but there's all kinds of things like uh, I don't know some kind of water or a gas tank uh, tons of garbage repurposed reclaimed if you will into trash just want to show you guys, even on the trail itself, there's remnants of a bunch of bricks everywhere.
beginning of the trail, and actually I just completed the whole thing. Here's also the ending of the trail. Uh, so you just do a little loop around the area. And uh, as I was just saying to some friendly people back there, I find it ironic that people go all the way, go out of their way <laughs> to go and look at trash, right? Because normally you wouldn't go and look trash and look for trash in your everyday life. However, when it's arranged in thoughtful ways, like this um, old doll with a cigar in her head, playing a, I don't know, playing on the computer, it becomes something, something more than just garbage. And it can tell a story or provide entertainment or, you know, even uh, beauty. I found the beauty in it because it's sort of like, I don't know, kind of like mocks us in a way because we're such consumers and we create so much garbage and waste that, uh, you know, normally this stuff is meant to be hidden, swept under the rug, thrown in the trash, hauled to the dump, but here it's like on display and uh, I think there should be more places like this because there's plenty of trash out there, <laughs> that's for sure. All right, well, that was a super fun hike, and I, you know, it was like maybe a mile round trip. So would I recommend it? Yeah, why not? Because here's the thing that's different about this hike as opposed to any other hike, and you already saw it. It has art installations made out of garbage. So if you want an activity with something different, this is your spot, <laughs> doll head trail. So this is Dustin Weaver. What's up, y'all? Dustin was, I think, the biggest help when I first started getting interested in travel shows and stuff like that. And I haven't seen him in how many years? It's probably six. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> so, no joke, he edited some of my first stuff, which, by the way, was really terrible. But was, A for effort, yeah, you right? Know, for what we were working with, I thought it was pretty awesome. I, I don't know. I thought, like, you know, it could have been worse. Uh, yeah, it could have been worse. Yeah, that's true. That yeah. is true. It, w it wasn't terrible. Actually, let's roll that clip. The International Pillow Fight is in downtown's Pershing Square, and I assure you it is the only thing square today. Thousands of pillow fighters invade this downtown block once a year to ruffle some feathers and let their inner child out as they fight to the death of their pillow. Well, we're finally here. Let's go see whose feathers we can ruffle. Even the Easter Bunny came out a day early to hop around the action. Five, four, three, two, one, one. Check that out, Frito Pie. It looks like uh, Badge is a, a Canadian taco in a bag thing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that looks like a heart attack, but it is uh, tater tots and cheese. It's, it's a heart attack on my face. <laughs> you see that smile? Oh, man. That's where happiness comes from. Oh, that's... A lot of people think it comes from Santa Claus. It's not. Yeah. It's a Tominator. Well, that, that's actually where Santa Claus's belly comes from, is uh, the tater tots right there. Factually. Factually. <laughs> so, so, anyways, I guess I'm going to throw a clip in from the old stuff. I don't know, comment below how you liked it, but uh, Dustin was the first person to really help me, like a real genuine friend, and we got this project. I had no idea what I was doing, but somehow he poof turned it into something way better than the quality was. So thank you, man. Hey, listen, you, you're sitting here telling me that I did something. He was the one in front of the camera. <laughs> I just gave him a little nudge, a little bit of knowledge. Look at him now. He's all grown up. He's all grown up. So check this out. I got this pretty looking lean brisket. D, what'd you get over there? It yep. looks like you got more food. I got ribs. <laughs> ribs and a little bit of some pintos and then box of roni. Dang, look at how good this looks. Oh my gosh. Dustin just donated a rib. You guys all set? It is so good. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're not kidding, bro. This is a great spot. I don't, I don't lie. <laughs> Here is the uh, first bite of the lean brisket. Go. Fantastic. Good spot, man. I got a fatty. <laughs> we're, we're having our camera goodbyes right now. So good to see you, Jax. <laughs> um, if you can do me a favor and make it like uh, this decade next time I see you, that'd be great. <laughs> I know. I haven't seen you in maybe 
Five years. I'm pretty sure Bush was president. Probably. Not factual. <laughs> uh, such a great dude. Good to see you, man. Let's see ya. it out. Ah! All right. See ya. See, see you next time in uh, Atlanta. <laughs> Thank you.